Hi, my name is Emily Bache and I'm going to show you the Gilded Rose refactoring carter using approval tests and coverage. I'd like to credit Llewellyn Falco for showing me how to solve it like this. So if you go to my GitHub page, you can find the code that I'll be working on. I'm going to use the Java version in this screencast. There's a readme file with some more information and do have a look at this. But I'm going to jump straight into the code and show you how I would solve this cutter in this particular way. So the starting code, you, you inherited this class with this update quality method, which is a bit difficult to work with as it is, and you've been asked to add a feature for a new kind of item. So the way this handles the different kinds of items is quite complex, and before we can change this code to add the new feature, we need to refactor it. Before we can refactor it, we need some tests. It comes with a starting test, which fails. So the first thing to do is to get the test to pass. Here I'm using IntelliJ uh, Community Edition, and it's, I'm going to be using some of the features of this IDE, so I do recommend you get this or something like it if you're going to try and take this approach. So the quickest way to make the test pass is to change the name of the item to, to match the name that we constructed it with. And this is showing that we have set up the IDE correctly. I'm going to rename this test as well because foo is a pretty terrible name for it and what it's actually testing is the update quality method. Now I'm not very happy with this test. It's not a very strong test and I want to considerably improve this test before I rely on it for refactoring. The first thing I'm going to do is to convert this to use the approval test framework. From the approvaltests.com website you can find all the platforms that this tool supports. That includes Java and here on the Java page we have a little snippet for your POM file that means we can add this as a dependency. So that's the first thing to do. And then we import that change. So now we can rewrite this test to use the approvals framework. I'm just going to do a pure refactoring of this test first. So this line is equivalent to that line. But if I run this test the first time, it will fail because I don't have an approved result to compare against. So let's just see the differences that it's expecting an empty string. So then I can go to my terminal and just paste in the command that approvals printed out for me, which approves the result, and I can run it again. So now the test is passing and it's comparing what it gets from this with the contents of the approved file, which is foo. So this is a refactoring of what the test was before, but approvals can do a lot more than this as I'm about to show you. The next thing I'm going to do is to make this assertion stronger. The moment we're only checking the name of the item is not updated, but if we look at the update quality method, it does update the quality and the sell-in of the items. So we need to check what has happened during the update quality method to those two. So the easiest way to do that actually is to note that the item class has a toString method that prints out the name, the sell-in and the quality, and that would be a better string to pass to the approval tests than just the name. So when I run this, it will fail because the output has changed we are now outputting the sell-in and the quality as well as the name. So I just need to approve that. Then the next thing I want to do is to make this test even stronger because currently we're only testing it with one kind of item with one particular setup of sell-in and quality. If I run this with uh, coverage enabled, you can see that clearly when I execute this test, there's a lot of lines of code that aren't even executed. And that's because 
Um, they are looking for items with particular names and particular values for quality and selling. So I need to expand my testing to have better coverage. So before I do um, too much of that though, I'm just going to configure IntelliJ a little bit better. The kind of coverage you get by default is um, quite weak, but you can set it on this more powerful tracing coverage like this. The other thing I'm going to configure is so that it doesn't pop up this window at the side all the time. And I do that in the preferences for IntelliJ as a whole. So if I look coverage as a whole, activate the coverage view, that's one I didn't want to do. And I also want to uh, make sure I'm always looking at the latest coverage data. So now when I run this again with coverage, I'm getting more detailed coverage information. These yellow lines are partially covered. The green lines are completely covered. The red lines are not covered at all. And these yellow ones you can click on to get more detail. So here, every time we hit this line, this statement evaluates to true. So we're never evaluating this line when it returns false. So we would like to have some tests that would fully cover all of this code before we start refactoring it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, a aspect of approval testing which is called combination approvals. So I'm going to rewrite this test first to uh, use this new tool. Here, for the verify all combinations, I need to pass it a function and then the other arguments to this are what arguments I should pass that function. So it gets a little bit hard to explain, but I think you'll be able to understand better when I've if I just do this in front of you. So let's just comment that out for a moment. I first need to create this function. Now this is the thing I want to approve on. I'm just going to extract that as a variable. That's the string representing the item. That's the thing I want to, uh, to check. The other thing I want to do is then, what I'm going to vary is the name of the item, the sell-in and the quality. So I'm just extracting variables for them too, because now this part of the code is easy to extract as a method, which will be do update quality. And that little refactoring I did to extract those variables first mean that I get the correct signature that I'm looking for. Um, so my new method is going to create an item with the given name, cell and quality update it and return the item string, which I can then verify just like this. So this is a completely valid refactoring of this test so far. It still works, but now I can start to use the more powerful combination approvals because now I have a function that I can use here. Now, this isn't as complex as it looks. I want a string which is the possible values for name, string array, a new integer array which is the possible values for cell in, and another integer array which is the possible values for quality. And at this point IntelliJ is prompting me that I'm not handling the exception that this method could, could throw, so Alt Enter add the exception. So this code is nearly the same as that code. The test has failed because there's a subtle difference in the output. Instead of just printing out the string I'm verifying on, I'm also, the combination approvals is printing out, these are the arguments I got given and passed to the function, and this is the result I got. So this is again a slightly, it's not a stronger test, but it's easier to understand when it fails what combination of inputs caused the output to change. So I'm going to approve that. Um, so now I'm not getting the full value out of my combination approvals because I'm only testing it with one value for each of name, cell, and quality. So let's just inline those as well. And 
then we don't need these two lines of code. Great, so this test is equivalent to what we had before. The coverage it gives us is equivalent to what we had before. But now we can start to work on improving the coverage. So as I noted before, this statement is always true when we execute this code. So if I want to get full coverage of this line, I'm going to need to add an item called aged Bree. So I'm going to add that here and run again. This, of course, causes the test to fail because the output is different from before. Now when we pass aged Bree, it doesn't do the same as before. The, the quality in the cell in are uh, updated differently. Great, we've just uh, got another example of how this code works. I can, I can approve that because I know this code is in production, people are using it, I haven't changed the actual production code, so whatever it produces is by default correct unless I can get some confirmation that it's a bug. But what's happened to my coverage here, of course, is now I'm covering line 12. Aged Brie is now covering this line, and line 13 is now my target. I need to uh, have something called this as well, if I'm going to get this line. So there, this line went green. Now the next line, uh, I'm looking for a quality greater than zero. Now, at this point, the test is failing again, and, but I'm just going to concentrate now on coverage. I'm going to be able to approve all of these results um, in a minute. First, I'm going to just work on getting coverage. So let's see if we can put in quality that is greater than zero. Yeah, that's got me a bit better. And here we are. We clearly need one that's called sulfurous. There we are. This is looking a bit greener, a bit more covered. This line here, I need something with quality 50 or greater to hit this line, I think. Yep. And now we're coming to here. Here we need one with cell in 11 or greater. Right, and this line, ah, we already have one with quality 50. This one is a bit trickier. To get this line, I have to notice that on line 21 here, I'm actually updating the quality with one. So if I think if I pass 49 in here, so it's, if it's 49 here, I add one to make it 50, and then it will trigger this 50 here. So let's see if that works. Yep, now I get line 25, so this is looking a lot better. Um, I've got one here, selling greater than 6. Ah, here we are. This line looks a bit trickier, um, because we already have one called this. We already have one with quality greater than 0. Um, I think what's happening here is that we haven't got one with a cell and is less than 0. So let's put in minus 1 there and see if it will get us line 47. Yep, great. So and I think we've got green on all the lines now. So that was quite quick to get full coverage. Um, I discovered I needed all of these combinations of name, cell and quality. And now my combination approvals is showing us what happens with all of those combinations of inputs. And this is enough different cases. Each one of the lines in this file is effectively a test case. This is enough test cases to give us full coverage. So I'm going to approve that. So now we're in a much better position to start refactoring than we were before. We have some test cases that have good coverage of the code that we're going to need to change. Now, coverage is not the only measure of how well you're testing the code. Uh, another more stringent method is to subject your test suite to something called mutation testing. And there are tools that can help you to do this, but I was just going to show you a little bit by hand what it does. So basically you start with a, a test 
that all pass, and then you make a small change in the code, a mutation in the code, and then you run the tests again and see whether they actually catch the error that you've introduced. And in this case, my tests did find an error here. Uh, when I changed that line of code, the behavior changed and my tests alerted me to that. So that's a good sign for my tests. So I'm just going to do a few little mutations here just to check the quality of my tests before I start refactoring. And I'm concentrating on these small changes in the quality because I think those that's the most important thing that this update quality method does, is to update the quality. And if I update the quality wrongly, I want my test suite to tell me about it. So, so far, so good. Ah, now that's a problem. Look at that. I've managed to change the code, and the test suite didn't alert me to this. Now you may be a bit surprised by this, because I do have 100% coverage. But as I said, coverage isn't a foolproof measure of, of quality of your test suite. I think what's happening here is this line is being executed by the test case, but then something else happens later on in the method that means that that doesn't have any consequences for the results that this method then returns. So what I'm going to do here is just try and use my a little bit of analysis to work out what would be a better value to have in here to trigger this line to actually have an influence on the results. And I think the problem is that I don't have any kind of median values of selling. I'm going from 0 and then 11. So I'm going to put 6 in here, because 6 is clearly also a significant value. It comes up in this if statement here. So now I need to run the test again without a mutation in the code. It, of course, fails um, because I've introduced some new combinations. I can approve that and then run the test again. Now it should be green. So now I've got uh, the approved version, including six for selling in some of the, uh, the cases. So this is uh, an updated golden master. So now I change the code again to make a mutant. And I want to know if my updated test suite will kill this mutant. Aha, it did. The test noticed that I updated that value. And I'm hoping that they'll notice this one too. Mm, no, we didn't get that one. And again, I think we have too few values for selling. So let's take away the mutant again. Improve the test suite. I'm going to put 2 in here, so between 0 and 6. Um, and that's added some more cases. I'll show you the diff there. Got some new cases with 2 for selling. Can approve that. Now the test should be green. Now I can reintroduce my mutant and this time the test suite kills it. So I'm feeling a lot happier about my test suite now. Is there any more update quality? There's an update cell in there. Do we catch that? Yes we catch that one. Uh, what about this one here? Yep, that one was killed. And this one here. So, I mean, I'm being a little bit systematic here. I've been through all the places where I can obviously see it's updating quality or selling. And if I then uh, execute those lines wrongly, my test suite will tell me about that. So I'm feeling even more confident in my test suite now, and I feel that I should definitely be able to do some refactoring on this code particularly if I'm careful, I ought to be able to clean it up without breaking it. And if I do break it, the tests should tell me. So let's just take this opportunity to recap what we've done. We took some code that um, we've just inherited. We need to work with the code. Before we work with it, we need better tests. We've used uh, combination approvals together with coverage data and some mutation testing to create this test case which we feel is going to be quite good to rely on for refactoring. So the combination approvals tool creates this approved file that shows us all the combinations of name, selling and quality we start out with and then what happens to all of those values after we call the method. So this is 
80 odd test cases and the time it takes to execute is less than 200 milliseconds. Now that's pretty reasonable for a unit test and this is a lot less typing than many approaches that would get this good test coverage for this code. So in the next screencast I'm going to show you how I then use these tests, I rely on these tests while I do the refactoring.